everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my February favourites and disappointments for you guys. I actually can't even believe I'm doing this already. I cannot believe February is over. Like everyone was saying that January went slow and I was just sitting there like, are they in a different time zone to me? Because I thought that January was the quickest month and then February came along and just literally clicked my fingers and it's over. I know it's a short month but like literally the time is going so fast. This year is already flying by. So yeah, I hope it slows down, but I'm delighted to be back doing these favourites videos for you guys. I feel like I haven't done a monthly favourites in so, so long. I know I did my 2017 favourites a few weeks ago, but I really enjoy these ones too because it's just a good way to recommend some good products and just have a chat about what I'm loving. I love watching them especially and I love filming them for you guys. So yeah, I hope you're as excited about it as I am. So I have a mixture of things. Some of the things I'm going to talk about today are actually things that I only picked up in February and I have enjoyed them so much since I got them that I'm including them in this video and I know that might seem a bit quick and rash but these are products that I've absolutely just fallen head over heels in love with and I think that you need them as well so I've included them today and then I have some things that I've had for ages that I fell back in love with and some other new things that I picked up you know in January or December because I didn't actually do a January favourites and I have two disappointing products as well to talk about that I've been trialing out for the last few months and I just did not feel worked for me so I'm going to chat about them too so yes let's jump right into the video Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is a lip product and this is something that I have been using non-stop since January. Like the first week I came back after Christmas, I just found it again. I think I was unpacking my stuff from coming back from Ireland and I came across it and I was like, oh my god, I haven't used this in so long and I have not worn a different lip liner since I've come back. And it is stripped down lip liner from MAC. I personally think the MAC lip liners are the best on the planet. Like I just think they're so, so good. They're nearly the only ones that I wear. And this particular color is amazing. Before I fell back in love with this, I used to always go between Hover and Spice, which are two favorites of mine as well. And I think they're amazing too. But I've just been really enjoying this shade. It's a little bit more cool tone of a brown. And I just think it looks so good with nude lipsticks. I have not picked up Spice and Hover since I've started using this again. I feel like I'm cheating on them. But anyway, I absolutely love this. I have it on right now with a lipstick that I'm gonna be talking about as well. Yes, I just think that if you like nude lipsticks and if you're looking for like a new kind of cool tone brown liner, you will love this as well and I would so recommend checking it out. I think they're only like 16 euro. I'm not sure exactly how many dollars they are. Around the same, I'd say there's not a huge difference anymore. But yeah, totally worth your money. They last it and I just feel they wear really well also. Like if I put this on in the morning, it's usually still there by the time I get home. And yes, this color is just so, so nice. And I definitely think you should check it out if you haven't already. Sticking on the lip front and also the MAC front, I'm gonna talk about the lipstick I'm wearing as well. Cause this is another thing that I have not stopped wearing this month. I only bought it about a month ago, but I've literally worn it every single chance I've gotten this month. And it is Flesh Pot from MAC. You'll even see that it's like worn down. I only have it like a few weeks. Um, but yes, this is the lipstick I'm wearing over stripped down tonight and this is just so so nice guys It's a satin finish as well. So it's not very drying. It feels really comfortable on the lips The only thing I will say is that because it's a satin it doesn't last as well as a matte would But if you're someone who does not like matte lipsticks, you will love this I personally like matte lipsticks um, and I still like it as well I just find that I have to top it up a bit more regularly But the color just does it for me like it's the perfect light nude and I just feel like that mixed with strip down is such a nice mix. Like I find by itself, I don't get away with it because I'm probably too pale for it. Even with tan on, I just feel like it's a bit nudey by itself. But with strip down or with any other brown liner in general or pink liner, it is just phenomenal. I love this. So yeah, that lip combo, I would so recommend to check out if you're in MAC. And if you're a nude lover like me, I bet you, you will love it too. Moving on to a skincare product that I've tried this month. This is actually a bit of a random one. She got this at an event I went to in January, I think it was. It was an event Equinox was doing with Glossier to promote one of their new classes that they were hosting. And yeah, Erica and I went along and in the goodie bag, we got this face mist. And I honestly have been using it so much. I put it in my bathroom because I thought the packaging was pretty and I find myself like reaching for it now all the time. It's just really refreshing and it's just a nice thing to do like after you get out of the shower in the morning or before you go to bed at night. And yeah, it just feels lovely. Glossier is a brand that I've been meaning to try for so, so long. I feel like the hype around Glossier like built up overnight. Like there's just so many people talking about the brand and so many people happy with the products. So after trying this, I'm so intrigued and I really wanna try a few more things. 
especially the exfoliating solution i think that's what it's called i'm not 100 sure but i've heard loads of people talk about that and i have found that i have had a little bit of extra texture lately on my skin um so yes that's definitely next on my list to try out it's supposed to be amazing for breaking down the dead skin cells on your face and just overall cleansing and giving you a brighter more radiant complexion so yes that is definitely next on my list but in the meantime if you're in the search for like a new face mist just something nice and soothing um just like more of a luxury product i guess like this obviously isn't a necessary product but i've just really enjoyed using it over the last month like it's just something that like i've looked forward to using and i just always think that's nice so yeah as i said if you are in the search for a new face mist i would definitely recommend checking this out i'm not sure of the exact price but i'll put it on the screen here along with the other products and i'll link everything below as well just in case you're wondering but yes i really really like this so far the next thing I'm going to talk about is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. I actually put this up on either my Snapchat or my Insta stories as well about a month ago saying how much I was loving it and I honestly really have been. Like this is something that I've had for ages. I actually had it in my drawer I'd say for about seven or eight months and I did not touch it. My sister Erica actually gave it to me. She had it and she, she just found that she wasn't really using it. So she gave it to me and I kind of put it in my drawer then because I was using other highlighters and other bronzers. But I decided to pick it back up this January just because I've been really liking this bronzy glowy look. And I said I'd give it another shot. It looked really nice. The colour looked nice and light for my skin tone. And I liked the highlighter was a little bit more subtle, like not in your face. It just gave you like a nice glow. And I honestly have not stopped using it. I absolutely love this. I think it's really nice if you're looking for more of a subtle look. Like I don't think this is going to give you like a chiseled contour and like a highlighter for, that you'll see from space. But if you're looking for something nice for daytime or if you just prefer that more subtle look, that more subtle bronze look, that more subtle highlighted look, I think you'll really like this. I don't actually have it on tonight now but I have been wearing it non-stop since Christmas just for going to work and things like that and yeah I just feel like it gives my skin a really youthful look so yes it's not the cheapest product I'll definitely raise my hand to say that it is pretty expensive and even when Erica gave it to me I wasn't even that bothered about it because I just thought that it was always a little bit expensive for what it was and although it looked really pretty and the packaging was really fab I just never thought that it would be that good for the price but honestly it is a really nice product and the packaging is really luxurious and yeah I do think it's a nice thing to have in your collection so if you are looking to treat yourself to something a little bit more luxurious, I would recommend this. And mine's in the lighter tone as well, by the way. I think it comes in a darker tone and a lighter tone. So yeah, I could be wrong there, but I'm nearly sure this is the lighter one. Sticking on the bronzer front, I'm probably jumping the gun saying that this is one of my favorites from this month, but I literally can't help myself. I only have it about a week now, but I've literally used it every single day and I'm obsessed with it and it is the Hoola Benefit Bronzer. I put this in one of my last videos using it as a first impression and I honestly have fallen in love with this. I have it on tonight and I've been wearing it all week since I've gotten it and I can just see why everybody loves this now. It's a pretty hyped product. Everyone and their mother loves it and has it and I always wondered why everyone loved it so much and now I know. It is so nice, guys. It's like the perfect warm bronzer. It just makes you look like you're after coming back from holidays and you have a nice tan and it's still like dark enough to contour with I find like if you don't want a really sculpted contour like I like the effect that it's after giving me today now it looks like I'm bronzed but I was also able to get a little bit of dimension with it which I love and yeah I'm obsessed with this it's so pigmented you don't really need to use that much a good bit goes in your brush when you dip it in so you don't have to be like going in kind of swirling your brush around it's just quick and easy gives you a nice effect and yeah I know you're probably thinking it's way too soon to judge it, but I have to include it because I'm obsessed. <laughs> Next up is a thing that I have fallen back in love with this month, and it is the Modern Renaissance palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Please ignore how disgusting and grubby my packaging is. It's in the drawer with all the other ones, and like this packaging just is, it's just a recipe for disaster. It gets so dirty and disgusting. But, but as I said, this is something I have fallen back in love with this month. And um, I got this last year, I think it was like March or April and I loved it then, like I really did, I used it all the time. But then, you know, I got new palettes and I was trying out different things. So I kind of like put it away into the drawer and I did forget about it, I'm not gonna lie. But for some reason I started using it again in January and I just remembered how much I loved it and how good a palette it actually is. Like I just love the colour section, the pigment is so good. 
you can create so many different eye looks with it. I like that there's like nice shimmery colors and this one in particular is so, so nice Primavera. It's really pigmented and I love that there's like a darker brown as well and there's lovely transition colors. It's just such a nice palette. Yeah, I'm glad I kind of reached for it again and remembered how good it is because it honestly is so, so good. So if you're looking to invest in any new palettes and you haven't tried this one, I know nearly everyone has at this stage, but if you haven't, just in case, I would definitely check it out. I definitely think it's the best palette she's brought out so far. I am definitely intrigued to try her new one, the Soft Glam. That looks absolutely stunning, but I didn't really like subculture. I, along with the rest of the world, thought that the shadows were pressed really weirdly and they just didn't blend very well. And I'm yet to try Prism, but judging on the colour front anyway, I think this is the nicest one she's brought out so far. And yeah, check that out if you haven't already. Sticking on the eye front, another product I've been loving over the last two months is this Rimmel Scandalize Coal Pencil. You might have seen me use this in my everyday makeup look. It's just a black coal pencil, but I just think it's really good for the price and for the fact that it's Rimmel. It was really nice to apply, it blended really well. I've been loving that kind of like smoky, kind of no liner look this month and January as well. And I just found myself reaching for this a lot whenever I created that. So yeah, I just think that's a really handy product to have. So if you're looking for a new Cole eye pencil, I would also recommend to check this one out. I just usually put it on my lash line and underneath and then get like a little bullet brush and blend them out. And I just find that the color came out really well and that it lasted on my eye. So yeah, I definitely want to check out these in more colors. I'd love like a dark brown as well. You know, so say for instance, if I'm wearing a look like this and I don't want to go as dramatic. But yeah, I just think that that's a great alternative to liner, as I said in the video, and I've been really enjoying using that. So great affordable product. The next favorite's a little bit random, but it's something I've been using a lot this month, so I said I'd include it and I've really enjoyed it. And it's just this mini beauty blender. It's actually the uh, Real Techniques beauty blenders. And I've just found this really, really handy this month. I have been using it nonstop. I just think it's a great size for getting in around the eye area and around the nose area without kind of affecting the rest of the skin. And yeah, I think the beauty blenders from Real Techniques are by far the best. Like the orange one is my life and soul. I love it. I use it all the time for my concealer. So yeah, what happened is I couldn't find that one day this month and I found this in my drawer as a spare and I said I'd just use it and I fell in love with it. It's just so good. I love the size and I definitely think these are the best. So if you're looking for a beauty blender, if you don't have one already, you need to get one by the way. But if you're looking for a new one, you need to get the Real Techniques ones. They're so, so good. They're just the perfect kind of um, squidginess, if that makes sense. Uh, I find that the actual beauty blenders don't work as well for me for some reason. I just thought they were too soft, whereas Real Techniques is just, it's not too soft, but it's not too hard. It just bounces the product really, really well off the skin, and I just get the best finish with it, and it's a nice shape. I like that it has the flat edge as well, so you can kind of get in under the eye, whereas the other one is just round all over. So yes, really enjoyed this, um, and I think you can get like a pack of a bunch of these small ones with the big ones, so maybe look out for that. I'll, tr I'll try and link some options below, but yes. Liked this a lot. And my last favourite is another thing that I just started trying this month. You'll have seen me talk about this in one of my last videos as well, my first impressions. I told you in that video that I had tried it the day I went to the Maybelline Masterclass, but I was in a huge rush that day, but I really liked it. And then I tried it again in that video and I loved it again. And I think I've worn it every single day since. I'm wearing it right now. And I honestly think this is probably one of my new favourite foundations. I know that's a bold statement, but I really do think it is. I just absolutely love the way it makes my skin look. I think it's just the perfect mix of like natural but radiant and glowy. And I just feel like it gives me such a smooth complexion. I just love it. I think it's so, so good. I think everyone actually in the beauty industry right now feels the same. Whoever's tried this has also loved it. Like every review I've watched, people are loving it and living for it. And I honestly agree so, so much. Nars did such a good job with this foundation. I think the coverage is amazing, but it doesn't feel heavy. As I said, I love the finish, and I just think it lasts really well on the skin as well. Like, like it's nine o'clock now, and I've had this on all day. I put it on at like maybe 11. It still looks pretty good, I think. So yes, if you're looking to invest in a new kind of high-end foundation that I think is so worth the money, definitely check this one out. It is a bit more expensive. I think I paid about $50 for it. So not cheap at all for a foundation. But honestly, I think this is so, so nice. I would just get a sample anyway and just try it and see how you get on with it. And I bet you you'll go back and buy it because it's just amazing. So yeah, well done to on that one. So, so good. 
And that's it for favorites, guys. I think that's everything. I'm definitely probably forgetting something. I always say to myself throughout the month, oh my God, I love this product. I need to put in a favorites video. And then I completely forget about it once I actually film the video and I only remember afterwards. I need to start writing them down. But there are definitely things that stood out to me and I remember it. So yeah, I will check those out. And now on to the disappointing products. I only have two that came to mind. And um, these are two things that I've just tried and I tried again, but they just did not work for me. And yes, the first one is this mascara from Rimmel. It's called Volume Flash Scandalize Waterproof Mascara. And honestly, I just thought this was really bad. I just, it did not work for me. But saying that, I do not have the best lashes. They do need a good bit of volume added to them and a bit of lengthening. And I just found that this didn't do that for me. Maybe if you have good lashes naturally, it'll work for you. But yes, I was actually really surprised because when I saw the brush, I was like, oh, I really like that. And it was like nice and thick and I thought that it would really add volume like straight away and that it would like lift the lash. But honestly, I was just like going and going and going and nothing was happening. So I don't know, I did give it a good few tries and I did try and mix it with other ones. But overall, I just don't think this is worth it for me. I do think there's much better mascaras in the drugstore, in the pharmacies. Like I'm obsessed with the L'Oreal one and the lash paradise i think it's called and they're around the same price so i would definitely go for that one over this one and yeah if you have lashes like mine that are not very good and that kind of need a bit of work and need a bit of help i would just steer clear of this the next product is a brow product and again it's just something that has not worked for me it is the ka brow i think that's how you pronounce it from benefit and yeah i have this a good while now i have it about i'd say eight months and when i got it i tried it out didn't love it but I said look I must give it a few more goes and I've tried it out several times since including over the last you know month or two just because I found that I reached for it a lot because it has the brush attached and say if I can't find my brush I always think oh this is a handy one I'll grab it and I'll try and use it again and um, but it just always disappoints and I always end up having to go back in with the other products I just think that it's the formula that's the problem um, even when I got it at the start like straight away I found that it was a bit drier than other products I've used I don't know if that's just me, but I just did not think it was a good product for my brows. Um, the brush is grand, and like I do think that the packaging is very handy. But overall, I wouldn't recommend this. I do think there's better brow products out there. Like the Benefit Brow Pencils, I just find are actually way better than this. And I love the brow gel that they have. Um, I think that's incredible. But this, for me, just didn't work. And yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. And that is everything, guys. I know there's not loads and loads of stuff there this month. But I have been buying a good few things. I have been um, trying out loads of new products over the last few weeks. So hopefully now next month I'll have a lot more. And yeah, I'm definitely wanting to keep up the favorites video on my channel. I know it's a long time since I did it now, but I definitely want to do it every month and hopefully have new things to show you all the time. So let me know in the comments if you enjoyed them and if you'd like to see more, hopefully you do. And yeah, don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up as usual if you liked it and hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification button as well. If you'd like to be notified about when I put a new video live, I do put my videos live every Wednesday and Saturday, but just in case like you ever miss a video and you'd like to have that email come in or whatever else, definitely hit that notification button. It's a little bell button, I think, under the video. And yeah, as I said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!